Hey everyone, how's it going? Mike here, and today we've got ourselves a budget deck that I'm going to be doing a little collaboration with another YouTuber. You guys may have heard of them. Uh, they are called Gaia Storm TCG. Now, their videos are in Spanish, but they do a fantastic job. They sub most of their, most of their videos in English, so highly recommend you guys check them out. Again, they take a look at a lot of the current popular decks, a lot of the powerful decks that we see in action, and some innovative decks as well. So with that, let's go and dig in to the uh, little deck that I've decided to build today. So keep in mind that this is a budget deck and we've set our budget precisely at a total of $80 or below. Uh, the total of my deck uh, is approximately $79. So it definitely falls within that line. Now I have to say that if we were not running a budget version of this deck, uh, we would definitely be including some Shaman EXs, but Shaman EX single-handedly is approximately $35 for the regular art, I believe, on trollandtoad.com, which is the source that we used uh, with regards to the pricing of our cards, which is just ridiculous, so I had to absolutely scrap that out. And anyways, let's take a look at the deck that we've got going on here. So. Entei is going to be the main attacker of our deck. It has the Theta Double ability which allows this Pokemon to have up to two Pokemon tool cards attached to it. I've decided to go with a strict build of uh, solely Muscle Bands as the Pokemon tool card attached to this Pokemon. So when we attach the two Muscle Bands onto that Entei, we can see that the Heat Tackle attack can hit for up to 170 damage. Now that is 10 HP short of being able to perform a one-hit knockout against certain EX Pokemon. But uh, we'll, we'll get to how we can actually pump out the damage by a little bit more and get it to a total of 180. Heat Tackle is going to be ideally the main attack that we will be making use of. We have to flip a coin. If we flip a Tails, unfortunately this uh, Pokemon does 30 damage to itself, but if we flip a Heads, there's no sort of uh, repercussions whatsoever. Uh, luckily for us, Heat Tackle, although it is very energetically expensive with the Blacksmith card, it's uh, we, can we can often get it going very, very quickly, so it's definitely not a big issue uh, with respects to us making use of this attack. We also have the Flame Screen attack, which can be useful, especially if we're facing, for example, a Vespiqueen deck. A Vesp uh, sorry, Flame Screen will allow us to reduce the damage taken by uh, this Pokemon from our opponent's attacks during the next turn by 30 damage, which is uh, pretty awesome. I mean, it it can actually definitely pay off. Sometimes it can get us out of that one-hit knockout range and just give Entei just the insulation it needs to be able to survive another attack. So Entei is going to be the main attack of our deck. As you guys can see, we're only running a total of 8 Pokemon, 41 trainer cards, which is a lot. So we're probably going to mulligan quite a few times. Now, to get the total damage output to a total of 180, we're actually running a 2-2 two, two Spinarak Ariados line. Spinarak uh, does not not exactly a fantastic Pokemon. I mean, its sole purpose is simply to evolve into the Ariados. Ariados possesses the Poisonous Nest ability, which allows us to uh, poison our opponent's Pokemon and our own Pokemon as well. Uh, with the exception, of course, in case that our opponent's Pokemon would happen to be a Grass type Pokemon. But Grass type Pokemon shouldn't give us a big issue because again, we do have that Entei, which is a Fire type, so it'll be able to absolutely ravage those Grass type Pokemon. So Ariados is actually pretty helpful. We are running two copies of it. Yes, at the end of the day, we are poisoning our own Entei, but it can pay off. I mean, at the end of the day, we are taking two prize cards per knockout, whereas our opponent is only taking a single one for knocking out that Entei. So I, I thought Ariados was actually a bit of a nice inclusion. So we are running a total of two copies of him in our deck. Now, this is a speed Entei build, so we're running a lot of cards that will just allow us to blaze through our entire deck. So we are running a total of four copies of the Acrobike, allows us to look at the top two cards of our deck, put one of them into our hand, and then discard the other card. So Acrobike really does pay off in this respective deck. We're also running a total of four copies of the Trainer's Mail. Again, it allows us to look through our deck and then hopefully grab onto something useful which we can then make use of. So Trainer's Mail is another fantastic card to include in this type of deck. We have a lot of draw support as well. So for example, three copies of the Roller Skates. Uh, if you guys are not running a budget deck version of this deck, I would recommend scrapping out the Roller Skates and instead running a total of three copies of the Shaman X because it works much better. Roller Skates, there's never a guarantee that we'll we'll be able to flip a heads but um in our case again we are under a strict budget of $80 or below so we are running a total of three copies of the roller skates which is of course why you guys can see that I'm not running any full art versions of any of my cards battle compressor definitely a very very important card in this deck will allow us to get some blacksmiths and ideally uh, some fire energy cards into that discard pile and then we can re repeatedly recycle them through the usage of cards such as the VS seeker and of course the blacksmith to get those fire energy cards back and then latched on to that Entei all over again so battle compressor is just a really really useful card we are running a total of three copies of that in our respective
active deck. We are running a single copy of the Sacred Ash because again we don't have a whole lot of Pokemon. Um, and we'd like to recycle those Entes as our attackers because we only are running a total of four copies of it in our deck. So Sacred Ash is really helpful. We are running a single copy of that. Uh, one Eco Arm as well uh, because we are running a total of four copies of the Muscle Band. And once those Entes do get knocked out, we'd like to ideally make use of that Eco Arm to shuffle three of those Muscle Bands from our discard pile back into our deck so that we can make repeated use of them. So Eco Arm goes a long way in this deck. Uh, we're actually running a single copy of that. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how helpful it is. But um, it it it, it seems to be pulling its weight from time to time sometimes unfortunately we do have to seek more or ultra ball them into our discard pile but um, again it definitely does seem like it's a pretty nice card to include in this type of deck we have a single copy of the switch card of course you guys are aware of what this does in case our Ariados happens to be our active Pokemon we can go right ahead and switch it out into the Entei four ultra balls will allow us to grab any of the Pokemon that we need so either those Ariadoses or of course those Entei's four VS Seekers again very very important uh, for blacksmiths a huge huge and important card in this deck it allows us to attach two fire energy cards from our discard pile onto one of our fire Pokemon. This is essentially the mechanism that really allows us to get that anti strategy going nice and early. So we are running four copies of the Blacksmith. Again, it does seem like a little bit overkill, and sometimes it is, uh, which is precisely why you want to potentially trim down the number of blacksmith and Blacksmiths in our deck later on, or even early on in the game, through the usage of cards such as the Battle Compressor. We also have a single copy of the Lysander, one Ace Trainer, and a total of four Seekomers. Doesn't seem like we have a whole lot of draw support, but again, keep in mind that we do have the Roller Skates, the Acro Bikes, the Trainer's Mail, so uh, we'll definitely be able to blaze through our deck for the most part, and to top it off, if that wasn't really enough draw support, we are running a total of two copies of the Scorched Earth Stadium card, allowing us to discard a fire or a fighting energy card from our hand, and by doing so, we're able to draw onto two cards. So, again, this will allow us to get our strategy going nice and early. Of course, we have four muscle bands. I already discussed this. This is just to increase the total damage output of that NT, and we have a total of 11 energy cards. Seven of them are fire energies and four of them are the double colorless energy. So with that guys, let me go and send a challenge to Gaia Storm PTCG and um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. So uh, what we're doing today is not exactly a challenge I guess you could say, but more so we're trying to show the best of both the Entei and the uh, Night March deck that we'll see our opponent using today. So they've, they've built a strictly Night March, uh, sorry, a uh, budget Night March deck. I mean, Nightmare decks, you guys are, of course, quite aware of how powerful and menacing they are. They often get set up really, really quickly. Uh, so we'll see how things go. So, uh, again, keep in mind that our budget was under $80. And this is Gaia Storm TCG that we are facing. So, if, as you guys can see, uh, this should be an interesting battle. All right. So, it looks like our opponent is going to be able to start off first. This could actually work in our favor. Uh, we have absolutely no cards. No cards again. Again, we do tend to mulligan quite often. And it looks like we're going to start off with the Spin Rack as our active Pokemon. So, I'm just going to go and wish them good luck. And uh, that is... Uh, pretty much all I'm gonna say so uh, half the time my messages don't send so let me try one more time and you know what I've given up um, if my message is not gonna send then whatever there's not a whole lot I can do about it looks like our, of course our opponent will be running the battle compressors the unknown a bit of an unusual addition to these night merge decks but uh, definitely one that I think we will be seeing a lot more of uh, so we're probably gonna see those lampins going into that discard pile first of all I mean that usually tends to be the case uh, just because Lampent really doesn't pull its weight whatsoever in these Nightmarch decks. The only purpose that it has in these types of decks is in that discard pile. Of course we could potentially see some sort of draw supporter going in that discard pile as well in case our opponent does want to make use of the VS Seeker for example. So we are going to see that teammates uh, definitely a nice card to include in these Nightmarch decks. Uh, one that I also think it's a fantastic addition to Vespi Queen decks because of course these decks do tend to run not a whole lot of energy cards and they do tend to run a total of four VS Seekers, so uh, those VS Seekers could repeatedly make use of that teammate's card, and that will allow our opponent to repeatedly grab onto, for example, those double colorless energies. So we're actually going to be seeing a combi make its appearance as well. Hopefully we can get a one-hit knockout on that Pumpkaboo, but uh, keep in mind that we're only running a single copy of the Switch card in our deck. So I'll absolutely be starting off with the Trainer's Mail, guys. And hoping that we draw into something useful, our opponent's going to go through a trainer's mail as well. So they've already discarded quite a few Pokemon. We're going to see that dimension value right away. Battle Compressor one more time. Uh, so again, all four Lampets are already in that discard pile. A Joltik as well. Uh, Vespic Queen as well. I'm not actually sure how many uh, Vespic Queens our opponent is running in their deck. But again, 
I think that Vespi Queen can, to a large extent, fill that void that we will be seeing uh, with, uh, of course, the Mu EX no longer being a part of the standard format. That unknown is going to go into the discard pile, allowing Silver Knight to draw onto one more card. So, uh, Revive, okay, that's definitely a nice card to include in these Night March variants. Alright, so let's uh, actually lay down the Scorched Earth Stadium card and make use of... Uh, its ability to draw onto some additional cards. So now let's go and make use of the Trainer's Mail Blacksmith. Uh, yes, I think Blacksmith is a fantastic card to have, so we'll absolutely be grabbing on to that. Let's go and use our next Trainer's Mail, and it looks like it's going to be a Seek more, uh, but I think I'm going to hold off on that for the time being. So I'm going to go and make use of that Ultra Ball. Let us go and get rid of the Fire Energy card, and I guess the Seek more as well for the time being, and that is going to be that first Entei making its appearance. So let's go and lay down. I'm going to hold off on the Muscle Bands for now. I mean, our opponent is obviously, uh, they can't, I mean, head ringer or anything like that because, of course, it is not an EX Pokemon. So those two energy cards are going to be attached onto that Entei, and unfortunately, that's going to have to be how we end that first turn. Now, if that Pumpkaboo wants to attack, it's going to need one more energy card, or our opponent is going to have to bring out an additional Dimension Valley. Uh, Night March decks do tend to run a total of four Dimension... Oh, so actually, I thought I had gotten rid of the Dimension Valley, but I, I guess I hadn't. Sorry, I, uh, I was pretty sure there was a Dimension Valley at play, but... Uh, guess I overlooked things a little bit. So I'm actually not sure if we're going to be seeing the Dimension Valley because of course our opponent is running the Vespi Queen as an alternative attacker as well. And I don't really think Pumpkin Mew is really meant to see a whole lot of action. I think that ideally what our opponent would like to do is... Okay, so we are going to see that Dimension Valley, but... Um, but I mean, uh, I, I tend to think that these Vespi Queen decks would tend to use the Joltik and the Vespi Queen. Uh, alternating sort of between each other, at, at least that's sort of my idea behind it. So we are going to see the Shauna, the another unknown making its appearance, so definitely a lot of Pokemon in that discard pile. So that is a total of 4 Night March Pokemon and 7 total Pokemon. So that Vespa Queen can hit for 90 damage, those Pumpkaboos can hit for 80 damage right now, so still falling a little bit short in terms of performing those big one hit knockouts on that Entei. So we may actually see that flame screen attack coming in handy. I can definitely attach two muscle bands on to that Entei during that next turn. And then we'll be able to hit that Pumpkaboo for exactly 70 damage. Uh, 10 HP more than we need to to be able to knock it out. Again, our opponent is just loading up their discard pile with lots and lots of Pokemon. Uh, again, our, our deck tends to go relatively quickly through the uh, majority of our deck as well, because of course we are running a speed Entei deck, but uh, of course those Nightmare decks do tend to be a lot more speedy. We're going to get hit for exactly 80 damage, and that's going to allow our opponent to draw onto that first prize card. Okay, I was going to uh, VS Seeker for a Seek more, but uh, looks like we've just drawn onto one as well. We definitely need one more Pokemon on that bench, and awesome, looks like we do have the Ultra Ball, so let's go and make use of that Trainer's Mail. Um, Sacred Ash, what Pokemon do we have in our discard pile? Just a Spin Rack? No, I think I'm going to hold off on the Sacred Ash for now. Uh, a Blacksmith, uh, well, I've already made use of that Seekamore, so I think I'm going to go for the Acrobike temporarily, guys. So let's start off by making use of that Roller Skate, and we're going to get a Tails, which is unfortunate. Um, so I think I'm going to go for the VS Seeker for now, guys. Let's go and make use of that second Acrobike. One more Blacksmith or a Muscle Band. I think I'm going to hold on to the Muscle Band for now. Uh, you know what? I don't really think we're going to need those Ariodoses, so I'm actually going to go right ahead and get rid of both of them to look for an Entei, which we will be laying down in that discard pile. Let's go and make use of that Flame Screen Attack, hitting for 70 damage and insulating ourselves by 30 damage as well. So we do have the Teammates card. I, I think I may actually make use of that during our next turn. I, again, it depends whether or not our Entei will be getting knocked out we do see a total of five night march pokemon in that discard pile all our opponent needs to do is battle compressor three more and then we would see that pumpkin performing a one hit knockout on that entity because again it does need to hit us for 160 damage and there are five night march pokemon yeah so we are going to see that uh, battle compressor that's going to allow our opponent to knock out that entity so it's unfortunate uh because this entity probably won't be able to attack um given the fact, of course, that it doesn't have any Fire Energy cards attached to it currently, which is really, really unfortunate. I mean, uh, I was really hoping to at least draw to one, or at least a double colorless energy, and that would have uh, potentially allowed us to attack. So we're going to see that Battle Compressor, just two more Pumpkin Boost, but of course we do see the Muscle Band, so that's going to allow our opponent to head for that Magic, 130 damage, again, after the insulation from that Flame Screen attack. So... 
Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to use that Sycamore or possibly the Ace Trainer. I think Ace Trainer would probably be the better option uh, just because it's going to lower the number of cards in our opponent's hand as well. Um, I mean, they don't have a whole lot in their hand and we do see one Dimension Valley in that... Uh, in our opponent's discard probably Vespicoon making its appearance, getting hit for exactly 130 damage. Now we do have a Fire Energy card, but this Entei is absolutely going to lose its life, so I think it would be foolish if I attach it onto that Entei. Let's go and use that Ace Trainer, get ourselves a brand new hand. Now I desperately need to draw onto an Ultra Ball, which I will get, uh, so I'm very, very happy for that. Uh, Lysander... Um, you know what, I don't think we're really going to need that Lysander, so let's actually go and get rid of it, and let's go and get rid of a Fire Energy card as well to draw on to that last Dente. So we're going to need a Sacred Ash, uh, it should still be in our deck, I'm pretty sure we haven't discarded it yet, so it definitely is still there in our deck. It's unfortunate that we have one of our Entei prized, but uh, again, there's not a whole lot that I can really do about that. Let's go and attach a Double Colors Energy on to this Entei, and then we're going to have to go and end the turn one more time. So our opponent definitely has an advantage right now, but I believe they've already gotten two of their Double Colors Energies in that discard pile. Oh no, sorry, it's just one. So I've only managed to take care of a single Pump Kaboo uh, right now, and uh, this Pumpkaboo is looking pretty menacing right now, so hitting us for 160 damage one more time. Another one of our Entes will make its appearance. And awesome, okay, so I can definitely use the um, Sycamore. I think it would definitely be the better option. I mean, I, w I sort of want to guarantee that I can draw into one more Pokemon. I mean, we have most of our Pokemon in that discard pile already, so I think using the Sycamore would definitely be the better option. I'm really, really hoping we can knock out that Pumpkaboo, guys. Um, I'd love to make use of that Blacksmith, but again, I do think the Sycamore is the better card to go with right now. So, um, okay, Sacred Ash, yes, I will absolutely, absolutely be making use of that. Let's go and get these Pokemon, put them back into that deck. Uh, let's go and make use of that Acro Bike, and we have a Spin Rack, awesome. I'll definitely be bringing that out into that bench. And now we have two more Muscle Bands, so we'll be able to head for 70 damage one more time. Flame Screen, getting a little bit of insulation and knocking out that Pumpkaboo for one more prize card. I'm hoping to draw onto another one of our Entees eventually. We're going to see that Vespi Queen make its appearance. Um, all it needs is a Double Colors Energy, and it will be able to knock us out. I mean, currently we've seen only two Double Colors Energies going into our opponent's discard pile. Um, and of course, if we do see the VS Seeker, our opponent could easily grab onto that teammate's card that we see in that discard pile. And of course, that would tremendously help out that Vespi Queen. So we are going to see the Ultra Ball, uh, possibly an unknown, I'm thinking, uh, just to allow the opponent to draw onto an additional card. Because I'm thinking they're desperately looking for a double colors energy right now. But again, I'm not entirely sure. Don't really know what Silver Knight does have in their hand. Uh, so, uh, they, I mean, things aren't looking all that great for us. Yeah, so indeed, we are going to see that unknown. Um, but our opponent already got rid of the Shauna and the Lysander. Um, so I'm not really sure what to expect. We're going to see that Muscle Band attached to that Vest between possibly Sycamore for a brand new hand. 14 cards remaining in our opponent's deck. We still have 17, so you guys can see we're going through our deck relatively quickly as well. Yes, we are going to see, of course, that VS Seeker. So that teammate's card is going to see a little bit of action. I believe, um, of course, all they need to draw onto is a double colors energy, and I highly, highly doubt that we'll see two double colors energies prized. Uh, so that teammates card, of course, uh, definitely paying off in that respective deck. Maybe I should have run. Well, I, I don't think teammates would have been all that great of a card to include in our Entei build, just because, of course, had I included it. Um, it would really sort of slow down our deck. I mean, ideally what we like to do is just stream attacker after attacker by repeatedly making use of cards such as, of course, the Blacksmith, the Battle Compressor, the VS Seekers, things like that. Um, how many VS Seekers have we already made use of? So that is two VS Seekers. Um, so I may just make use of the Ace Trainer card during our next turn, guys. Um, and we're going to see that Double Curse Energy getting attached to that Joltik. Uh, is there not enough Pokemon in that discard pile? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, that's right. So our Entei's Flame Screen attack is actually really, really paying off, guys. Uh, so otherwise we would have seen that Vespi Queen attacking us, but instead we're going to see Double Colors Energy getting latched on to that Joltik instead. Of course that Vespi Queen has absolutely no retreat cost. I'm thinking our opponent probably has one more Double Colors Energy in their hand uh, when they did make use of the teammate's card. So I think what I'd like to make use of during our next turn, guys, is the Ace Trainer. Again, I know our opponent doesn't have a whole lot of cards in their hand, but I think it can at the very least sort of disrupt their strategy. So I'm going to go and bring on the Ariodas temporarily. Let's go and make use of the poisonous nest and um, yeah so I definitely think using the ace trainer would be the best option right now again things aren't looking all that great for us but um, I think we can still make a comeback oh man I think we may have just lost the game guys 
Um, yeah, so yeah, I think that is going to be it. So I'm going to have to go into end the turn and say GG. Again, none of my messages are going through. For whatever reason, uh, let us yeah, let us spam a little bit. But uh, yeah, so it doesn't look like any of my messages are going through to our opponent. Not really sure if they're trying to message us as well. But uh, that is going to be it. And it's unfortunate, but as you guys can see, Night March is definitely a tremendously powerful deck. And it's really, really hard to keep up with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, please be sure to check out both of our channels. There's going to be a ton of links provided in the description section down below. Some annotations as well. And that is going to be it. So again, thank you guys very much for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.